Hello, and in today's gas mask or respirator video, we're going to look at the types of different lenses that respirators have. So this is not so much going to be about the material they're made from, whether it be glass, plastic, polycarbonate, you know, all that sort of stuff. What we'll be looking at in this video is the different types of lenses you actually get on respirators. So this is like, are they going to be round lenses, triangular lenses, weird curved lenses, panoramic visors, you know, all that sort of thing. To see what offers better things than others. So I thought the best place to start off would be with the um, traditional round lenses. Now as far as I'm aware, most World War I masks had these, lots and lots of World War II masks had these, especially the British masks, this being the Canadian C3. It's pretty much an upgraded light anti-gas respirator Mark II. Um, and these are very simple, lots of Soviet masks use these as well, GP5 lenses are essentially these kind of same round things, they're just more at a side angle like that. But, these are very good round lenses. Um, obviously, depending on the material, they might be a bit brittle or they might be alright. But these provide you with a fairly good field of view. Uh, being round, obviously you get a good idea that the art, what you're going to see is pretty even out of them. It's not like they've made the you know vision bigger or smaller in certain areas. Um, and another vital thing to note while I talk about this, obviously, is while I will talk about optical lenses properly in this video, bear in mind that if the lens looks f more forward like that, uh, you get a better frontal field of view, and it's better for looking down weapon sights. If the si uh, if the lenses are angled more like that, you get a better all round field of view, but it's harder to actually look down scopes or iron sights of a rifle. Uh, that's just generally mask preference for the most part, but you'll find well designed masks, um, ones designed for people using optics or anything like that, generally they look more forwards. General respirators generally have um, the things a bit like that, so you get a better field of view. As I said, advantages and disadvantages to doing it each way. Personally, I like them more when they go forwards. I'd rather lose a bit of peripheral vision, be able to use binoculars, scopes, all those sorts of things properly. But yeah, the traditional respirator lenses, as far as I could tell, were like this. The big round ones. Either looking forwards or slightly to the side. Uh, as I said, lots of nations did this. World War One, World War Two, they were pretty much the standard thing. The Soviets loved doing it through most of the Cold War as well, these type of lenses. There's not much bad you can say about them, as they're the, the original kind of lenses. I think they're the ones that, you know, people should sort of, I guess, base most masks on. How do they compare to round lenses? It's the very retro classic looking ones, though. Um, and it's a great place to start the video, in my opinion. And I thought while I was mentioning round lenses, I'd show off the Israeli civilian one, because this is like a more modernised idea of the same concept. But again, on these, you might be able to see they're a bit more at a side angle than they were on the um, other mask. One of the only disadvantages of this mask is your face doesn't sit that close to the eyepieces. But that's understandable because this is made as a one-size-fits-all mask and it's not intended for military use. But it's a kind of more modernised, like, plasticky version of the same concept that was, you know, popular on the other mask. Next up we have triangular lenses. Now, the logic with these, and I'm pretty sure the first masks to start using these were American masks, but I could be wrong about that. The idea of triangular lenses is you kind of have uh, mostly a circular lens at the top, or a square lens, and then as you get lower down, it's angled so you can see down a bit better, because one of the annoying things about lots of respirators is if you're trying to do something with equipment um, below your head, it's actually really hard to see it, especially because if you've got a filter on here, then you try and look down, uh, you can't really angle your head all that far down. Now, with these, field view from left to right is actually very good, and these are the ones that sit more diagonally, as you'll see. It means that I've got a bit of ghosting in front of my vision, but that's not a problem. But what it does mean is that I can see a lot more to the left and right. But I can still see well enough in front as well. Now, triangular lenses are very good from an actual view standpoint, um, because they're probably the most you can optimise having a good field of view, um, you know, with a standard lens type. Obviously, the size of the lens is, is important as well, um, because obviously, if you had these but they were a bit smaller and then you had the same exact mask but with bigger lenses, the one with bigger lenses would give you a better field of view. But regardless of these, I can see very well to my left and right, much better with the old British style round masks. Um, I can see down a bit better than with the British masks, um, but 
Again, you still can't see down all that well because there's obviously rubber there that I can't see past because I can't, you know, visually phase through the mask. But triangular lenses are pretty good. They were very common, as I said, the Americans, as far as more, introduced them in some of their World War II masks. And then lots of countries that copied M9s or copied various American designs went for these triangular lenses. From a visual standpoint, I like the old round lenses more, but from a practicality standpoint, I think triangular lenses are better, just in terms of what field of view you get, um, you know, an ability to use equipment with them. Now to look at optical masks, which is probably my favourite setup for gas mask lenses. Optical lenses are pretty much designed just to work with scopes um, and, you know, other optics like that. So the idea is that you can see incredibly well forwards and they're very flat, so you could put scopes and binoculars up to them. The disadvantage is obviously you lose a fair bit of field of view. Now, a good respirator, regardless of what it is, puts your head very close or your eyes very close to the actual opticals or, you know, lenses on a mask. The reason being that obviously the closer your eyes are to that, the better field of view you'll get. If you're really far back into the mask, you know, you're going to see a lot more of the inside of the mask than the outside world. Now, as said, I don't know how safe PBF filters are, so I'm not going to keep this mask on for very long. But yeah, opticals let you see very well forwards. I could use this very easily with a scope, better than a lot of modern respirators. But I can't see too well to my sides, funnily enough. Now, the SHMS is actually better than this uh, for providing a good view, in my opinion. But this is still good enough for using binoculars and rifle scopes and everything else with. So again... The concept itself is similar to the older masks, but the idea of optical lenses is they look straightforward and they're very, very good at using optics, as the name would imply. However, they kind of the trade-off of these is you can't see very well to the sides. Okay, let's look at a weird sort of mask design that uh, never became all that popular, but it was very good for when it came out, and it has advantages and disadvantages. Now, this is my S6 respirator, or SR6. And what Britain tried at the time is to give you a really good field of view, they actually made curved plastic on these. So you can probably see where the light's hitting it and how my finger runs across it, that that's actually curved plastic. Now this is both really good and bad. This is basically like an early attempt at doing a panoramic uh, lens, but without actually having a full face panoramic lens. And obviously the advantage is I get a very good field of view. Like the American masks which with the triangle lenses I can see very far to my sides. I can see down very well in these, because if you'll notice the lens is actually bigger than the oral nasal cup and everything, so I can see down with a bit of ghosting. I've got good vertical things. I can see far in front of me fine, and it's actually flat at the front, which is good if you're trying to use binoculars or scopes for this mask. So what's the problem with it? Well, where the plastic curves, um, so just there on that side, about there on that side, um, your vision's kind of wobbling constantly. It's sort of a fisheye effect, it's also a bit like if you were looking into where heat shimmers, if you ever look down a road on a hot day and you can see the air shimmering. It's very much like that, and wearing this mask for too long, especially if you're not used to the effect, will make you feel ill. Now, I think the more you use the mask, you kind of get used to it, but it's not a nice effect, and when you turn your head, everything kind of seems to blur and refocus constantly. It's not, you know, it's not a nice effect, but as I said, this is a very advanced design in terms of letting you see well. Now, if I was to redesign this, and I think this is what they kind of went for with the S10, rather than curving the plastic, I'd actually have the plastic at an angle like that. The reason being, you'd still be able to see fine, but I don't think you'd get the weird blur effect from the curving of it. Now, I don't know if on camera that there's any way that you'll notice that kind of blurring the same way as if I see out. What I'm going to just do in a moment is put the mask on the camera and see if it looks weird if I then pan the camera. Now apologies for the straps being in the way but I'm hoping if I turn that slightly you might start to see the effect. It does look on the camera's viewfinder like you'll be seeing it a bit there. If you look at that small mammals poster in the background you'll probably be seeing how it's kind of distorting when I turn the mask. And again it gives you a very good field of view, a mask like this. The issue is that it's not particularly pleasant to look through. Um, you know, it makes you feel a bit ill. Okay, so here's the type of lens that the S10 has. And as you can see, there's actually two types of plastic. There's a flat bit there. Then there's a curved separate kind of bit of see-through plastic there. It looks a bit glazed, but you can actually 
see through it. Um, now I think this is to kind of give a similar field of view to the S6 but to get around the problem the S6 has which makes you feel ill because it doesn't curve the plastic on this mask. So as you can see I've got a good field of view. It's technically the original British round type of lenses in these but I actually get a better field of view because a lot of it's made through sort of the glazed sort of plastic like that. So yeah. Uh, this is a really good way of doing it. Um, with Avon's later masks, they've gone more to the panoramic style and uh, just doing more relatively flat lenses, I think. But this was an interesting concept. I think the problem with this was the S10 lenses weren't made from the strongest plastic in the world, which meant that uh, they was probably a bit brittle doing them like this. Not brittle enough that the mask's going to fail horribly and kill the person with it. But I think when they made later masks, they said we really need to move to making polycarbonate lenses that are actually impact resistant, you know, for peace of mind. If you're using the mask, you'd probably have a, want a slightly less field of view, in my opinion, but a stronger lens, at least I would. Right, now let's look at a mask that, as you know, I'm not a massive fan of, but let's look at the panoramic lens. I did an entire video on panoramic lenses recently because people are interested in them, so I'm not going to repeat everything here. But the idea here is that you have one big bit of plastic or glass in the mask that curves, so it gives you a much better field of view. Now some modern panoramic lens masks that are really interesting, like the modern version of the Russian GP9, and a few other masks, some sort of more industrial ones or multi-purpose masks, actually kind of have a rubber head mask, but the entire front section is clear polycarbonate. Uh, 3M do some masks like that. Um, but I'm saying there's some that are really interesting where it seems like everything is pretty much polycarbonate where you attach the filter everything so you get a really good field of view out the front of the mask. These masks I've said before I don't think are as actually good for military use because it's hard to get um, something that's flat and curved in the right places. As I've moaned about before most of the weapons trials when they tried using them with the GSR failed because it's actually really hard to line scopes up with this properly despite what you might think. Um, so yeah, I don't think panoramic lenses are all that great for military use. I mean, yeah, if it's done right, it can probably work, but... Um, these are, I think, are a lot more suited for civilians and industry use, where you need a good field of view, uh, especially to prevent panic and things like that. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, the advantages to it are very obvious. You get a good field of view where there's no ghosting or anything like that. It's very good for seeing, but it's not very good for working with rifles and things like that. But you at least get a good field of view. So, there you go. That's my video summed up on the different types of lenses. I'm sure there are some that I've not even thought about to do in this video that exist. But they're the kind of primary type ones. Your round type, your triangular type, your optical lenses. Um, and your panoramic uh, ones. And some weird little odd designs I've shown on other masks where they try to be a bit ahead of their time. So like, the S6 is basically like if you had, you know, something blocking the middle of this mask, and then you had the two lenses like that, that's pretty much what an S6 is. Um, again, this mask is not as bad as the S6, but it does have a bit of weird blur, you know, on the peripheral bits because of how the plastic bends. As I said, not as bad as the S6, but it's still not, it's still there on this mask.